they basically had smoke coming out from under the driver's seat whilst they were driving down the M5 and had to pull over and call the RAC. And it's happened yeah. to me. Yeah. It happened to me. <laughs> You've got an £80,000 plus van. You've not used a gland for the solar panel. Hello and welcome back to the fire pit camper van conversation series. And again, you will see we have got no fire pit because it's absolutely chucking it down outside. But fortunately today, I've come to see Lewis from Temple Away Campers, uh, who carries out camper van conversions, and he's got a unit, so it's perfect, so we can come inside. But he wouldn't let me actually get the fire pit going. So anyway, welcome, or actually you should be welcoming me because we're on your premises, no, which is uh, good because it's horrendous weather out there. Yeah. It's not ideal. Not ideal camping weather, is it? It's sure. not, definitely not. So anyway, tell me a little bit before we get onto today's topic, which obviously is, you know, kind of the dangers of converting uh, your own camper van and the dangers which you can actually get with some conversions, which are not very good. Yeah, there are a few uh, out there. Yes. So yeah. what is it exactly you do? Um, so we're temporary campers. We've been up and running now for just over three years. Um, we're a conversion company based in, uh, in Devon, just outside Newton Abbott, um, and we effectively take your van from being a panel van or a part built camper or something to similar to what you see behind in our demo van there. So and we literally do everything from fitting a bit of glass, solar panel, right up to four birth conversion that meets all the standards required in terms of gas and electric and crash tested yeah. uh, bed systems and things like that. So yeah, we're, we're here hoping to build something that somebody really enjoys and thinks is worth the wait and perhaps changes the way that they spend their weekend so they can spend it out on the road or in their camper rather than stuck at home in front of the TV. So it's a proper consultative process as opposed to just your off-the-shelf packages? Yeah, it? yeah, definitely is. I mean, we've got, we work really closely with quite a, a few suppliers to get the right equipment. So, um, and we tend to stick to what we know, whereas a lot of people will try and diversify and do, you know, a million different camper vans and, yeah, offer something for every different van. Whereas for us, we, we know what we're good at, so we tend to stick to... To doing the vehicles that we that we know and we're confident in that the finish comes out right. So yeah, I mean theoretically, and that includes Fords. Yeah, include, there is a little a little transit custom Ford, tucked in behind that, us is there. That, is that getting in preparation for the the new VW Ford model which is coming out? Yeah, who getting knows? Getting yourself acquainted it, to the, that vehicle. Yeah, we we in fairness we do a few of them. The majority of our business is probably uh, is probably transported, but over the last sort of eighteen months. Customs become much more popular, yeah. and actually, it's a good van. It it's is a really, really yeah. good van. Yeah, I um, did do a video on that recently. And yeah, I drove one not too distant. I look into that. Yeah, and it was it was a really nice drive. Yeah, a couple is. of little things which I, I wasn't too keen on, but yeah. it just drives brilliantly. Yeah, yeah. and really there's nice. more product coming out on the market available for it. Yeah, um, this probably lends itself for a long time easier to be in a camper because of course there was a factory option for it, and yes. uh, and transport has always been the popular one, but as we go into this collaboration over the coming years, it's going to be an interesting time to see what's out there. But yeah, to be fair, we're probably, I'd say 80% of the business we do is is transporter. Um, and then the rest of it is is custom and crafter and the sort of bigger size vehicles as well, right down to doing caddies and stuff like that to micro campers. So yeah, it's, uh, it's an exciting um, industry to be in, but it's great because you get to see the customer's face at the end of it and they're not buying an off the shelf um, van that comes directly from the factory they're having something built with their interior choices their interior colors their own choice of pop top canvas and carpet lining and blind so it really does come together but like you said it is really consultative in terms of you know we, we've got customers who have waited two years to have their van built because they've been waiting for one to turn up yeah. from the factory with some delays around certain production bits and pieces which you've covered in previous videos anyway um but yeah it's it's really consultative from uh, from sort of day one when you get the inquiry right through to sort of the final consultation about 10 weeks before the van gets dropped off for build to finalising the colours and then obviously throughout the build as well you know we we keep the customer involved every step of the way really there's a whatsapp group normally set up for us and the customers and we'll send them pictures at key moments throughout the build so that way if they ever come to sell the van on the whoever yeah. they sell the van to has got like a diary of it being been built done. they can see what's gone into it and uh, and how it's been put together um, for the peace of mind of the person buying it, but also the peace of mind for the owner that's had it built specifically for them. And, you know, you hope they never want to come sell it, but that's yeah. not realistic. No, no, absolutely. Yeah. One day, oh, 
comes to us all, then yeah, we need everyone to gets the move bug. on. Kids get bigger, you need a bigger van yeah. or something like that. And then yeah, exactly. Move that. to the crafters, which obviously you said you do. Yeah, do. But what crafters. about um, obviously you mentioned the industry and you know you've been in it for a relatively short period of time. People might think for three years. Yeah, but obviously your history goes back be way way beyond that. Yeah, obviously, yeah. You know, it's only three years doing it yourself, it, but you come across a lot of horrors. There's a lot of dangers, isn't there, in this industry? There's a lot of people who... Yeah. Not... It is a big issue that the industry isn't regulated, and this yeah. is something which I am going to be um, talking about a little bit more in the future. Um, but what kind of things do you come across? What frightening scenarios have, have you uh, I seen? mean, we see quite a lot of it. Between... Uh, we're a small business, there's only three of us, but between us, we've got... We're coming up for 50 years' experience of doing this, so previously I've been a mechanic... Gary works with us. We've both got a big history in auto electrics, um, and the two uh, Gary and Benny work with us as well. Um, they both come from one of the biggest uh, vehicle adaptation companies in the UK, so yeah. there's a wealth of experience there. But we do see a, a few bits and pieces that you know come out and come into us with some issues, and you look at it and think, well, that's that's not right. What um, kind of things do you see? See, we see a bit. It tends to be the the major bits. You know, if you're for a self-build, for instance, if you're making something out of wood, you can't necessarily do it wrongly, if that makes sense, as long yeah. as you secure yeah. it down and it's put together right. But I think it's a lot of the bits that uh, that perhaps people think it seems like a good idea to do themselves, um, you know, especially around wiring, gas safety, finding the right bed system to use in the vehicle and things like that. Um, we, we see quite a few vans with wiring faults um, and to try and trace that back when it's already been built by somebody yeah. can, can be really, really difficult because you don't know where anything no. is. Um, yeah, I think we had a customer a couple of weeks ago where they basically had smoke coming out from under the driver's seat whilst they were driving down the M5 and had to pull over and call the RAC. And, it's happened yeah, to me. Yeah. It happened to me. And, yeah. then, and then the next thing you know, took it all apart, had a check out of what it was, and whoever had built the van um, had, uh, had basically managed to trap a cable underneath a bolt under the seat and shorted the whole system out. So yeah, it was a it was a full rewire front to back, but it you know that everything's hidden. You're trying to find out where everything is. So yeah, we you know and we'll do our best to help people yeah. put it right. But I think there are always certain bits that you probably want to do at the right stage of building the van. But as long as the person who's doing it is competent and they're using the right equipment, then you'll be fairly safe with it. But, yeah, there are... You do see a few a few horrible well, things. Well, funny, something I... One of my bugbears is actually seeing solar panels installed with the cables coming through the roof. Yeah. And they've not actually been done with a gland. Yeah. Um, and somebody was actually talking to me at one of the meets which we had, um, and they were saying that they'd known from a converter that that had actually caused a problem yeah. because it, it, it had shorted, shorted the system because it was done on a... The metal roof because they didn't actually have yeah. a pop top. A bit like mine, I've not got a pop top. Yeah. So it is still bare metal. Yeah. And it was short an hour. And it's just, why can't, why don't people, a gl gland? I mean, how much are glands? I mean, for Ten, cost price, tenor, something like just, that. Yeah. Why don't you just use one? They're so, they're so easy to do. Really frustrates me. Um, and something which I was talking to Dean about this ID camper, yeah. which I'd seen, they're not used a gland. Yeah. Like, You've got an eighty thousand pound plus van. You've not used a gland for the solar panel. See a few electrical issues, yeah. So you mentioned bed as well. What kind of things do you see as far as the beds are concerned? Because there's obviously a lot of different bed manufacturers on the market now. Yeah. Uh, and this is something which I am going to be touching on in a future video. So I'm not going to give too much away myself now. But this that this is a big key area as well, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah, I think it, you know there's. Again, it comes down to the type of setup you want in the back of the van as well. If some people want a U-shaped bed layout, in which case they're never going to be carrying rear passengers, no. so not required to be built. Well, though there are well, shouldn't be yes, carrying rear shouldn't passengers. Shouldn't be carrying rear passengers. Yeah, though there are crash-tested systems for U-shape, but for the majority of campers where it's your traditional well, type layout for the U-shape. But what about the seatbelts? Well, and that's that's where the question always comes. Absolutely. I think if you. It, like you said, there's different men bed manufacturers everywhere all over yeah. the UK. And, and you can tend to find, it comes back to this thing about if you stick with a fairly trusted name, then, and it's fitted correctly, you're going to be pretty safe. And that's pretty much reason. key there, isn't it? You know, yeah. fitted correctly. I yeah. mean, how many times do you see beds with the, the actual um, brackets and you've got extra bolts in there? 
stuck yeah, an extra bolt into re reasonably often. Re reinforced, it's yeah. even stronger now. Yeah. No, it's not because these systems are designed with flex. They need yeah. to flex. Yeah, if, if, if you're putting that, that in there, it's not as well. Flex. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, yeah. you're actually taking away that testing because you're putting an extra bolt to yeah. make it stronger. Yeah. It's not flexing, so it's not. Yeah, it's not going to work. And as long, you know, the when, for instance, a crash tested bed is sent to whoever it is. So when we order our beds, we've got four or five manufacturers that we deal with that are tried and tested. Um, but when it comes, it comes with a certificate with it. You know who's built the bed. They yeah. provide the exact fitting kit required for the bed. Um, and we tend and to how look... to fit it. Yeah, 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 exactly that. And there's training around it, you know, for all the dealers. Um, that A lot of these companies, they won't take anybody on board. You have to go through the process that they want to check you out, make sure that you're reputable, that you know what yeah. you're doing. Um, and we check we check probably every van that comes in to look at bits and pieces before it, it arrives with us. Yeah. So, um, for instance, if we're doing a pop top, we'll still have a good look. And uh, we had one back earlier in the year where um, the bed was in. Bed looked fine on the face of it. Yep, you can sleep on it. It's got some seat belts. All looks quite comfortable for a rear passenger. Um, but then when we looked at it, it had been screwed to the ply floor with wood screws. It's probably 10 wood screws holding it into place. Um, and as soon as the customer dropped it in, I just said to him, like, I can't issue a crash certificate for it because that's not what we do. We're not mm. the manufacturer. But what I can do is I can ensure that it's properly bolted in the right position through the vehicle um, to make sure it's as safe as possible for your, for your rear passengers. But, you know, it's a chance you take, yeah, as with a lot of these things. But, um, but yeah, you've got really, really got to follow the guidelines um, for what is issued to you to make sure, it's, make sure it's done right and make sure it's done properly. Following instructions, which is something which not everybody does and i know one of the a particular company who does a lot of camper van conversions and they're not within the actual instructions they yeah. don't comply with the instructions and i was actually at one of the the shows not too long ago and the guy was showing oh fantastic look at this van it's and it was a lot of money. A lot, yeah. it was a you know it was a new map new van and um went up to the door and i'm like tapping it and i'm like where's your installation yeah in no there? no soundproofing like, oh, in there yeah, but i don't need any sounding in our installation you, you're sleeping in it, and then you've got screws in the side steps because yeah. they can't be bothered to actually buy the taller step. And yeah. the guy oh, is just like, my word, what what are you doing? I think you but, expect that's why we do that sort of stage by stage process with photos for the customer, so that yeah. they can see how it's been yeah. put together. And yeah, you know, we see a lot of people who have gone and bought a van uh privately or or whatever and and actually or they've been sold it from say a, a car dealer that doesn't know their way uh, around campers whereas when yeah. we build one yeah there's a five page instruction manual for where everything yeah. is in the van and how do i change this fuse and how the bed works how the roof works all of that sort of stuff and we're on hand afterwards to yeah be there for you know any yeah. customers that have got a query because people do because they go away it's all very exciting yeah picking up your camper but whatever we go through in the hour and a half handover process, by the time you've got to your first campsite at the end of that weekend, yeah. you've forgotten half of it because you're so excited yeah. about getting away. And that's yeah. part of the after sales service with it yeah. as well. You know, annually, we we offer every customer, if you want to bring it back, we'll just check it over, give us a couple of hours with the van, go off and get yourself a coffee or a bit of lunch. We'll just check everything's right for you. Well, that's it, isn't it? Because the electrics, I mean, I have spoken about it numerous times on my videos that your electrics should be tested every year. Yeah because you've got moving parts. Um, and I know that, you know, I could go around my van and yeah, I could do it, but I'm not a competent electrician. Yeah. Um, and I did install my own electrics. But before I pressed that switch to say, this is my electric system, everything's working. I took it somewhere, not to you, to get but I am coming, yeah. I am coming to you, as you know, um, to have another annual check to yeah. make sure that it's it's done and it's it's working. It's peace and of mind. Another connections. Yeah. Well, that's it. Because yeah. with electrics, you know, especially if you're sleeping in that van, something goes wrong. Yeah. Something yeah. could be go wrong, and it should be catastrophic, especially when you've got gas in there as well. Exactly. Which yeah. is another thing, isn't it? You yeah. know, you you come across some dangerous installs of gas. Yeah. There's a lot of rubber hoses, which yeah, shouldn't be gas there. not in a locker, not vented out through the floor. Yeah. Not sealed. Yeah. We we see. It quite, but quite how a few do these of companies? I know the answer to this question. How do these companies get away with it? Well, it's because they're not regulated. Yeah, not regulated, and also, like you said, people go and look at a camper, and it's all exciting because we're going to be able to get away in it, and maybe not looking necessarily at the detail of it. But you can, yeah, it, I think it's very easy when you go out to buy something or get something built to 
get like caught up in the hype of of the excitement of god we've been waiting ages this is a real yeah. dream for us and then if you look in real depth at what's in the van and how it all looks if chances are if certain bits of it look untidy that tells you what's yeah. probably behind the scenes yeah. as well and like you said you tap on the door if it sounds like a, a sheet of steel as it would be from the factory yeah. then that will give you a, an indication as to how well perhaps the rest of it's been put back together yeah absolutely so as far as a self build is concerned obviously self build is a little bit different um what kind of things should people be did looking at if they if they're doing a self build uh i think um we tend to advise quite a lot of people around self build because people do want to do some bits yeah. themselves and that's great because they've got some personal input into how it's been put together but we're quite happy to talk people through the stages of it and help them with the bits maybe that they're unsure of in terms of we've done lots where we'll do the first fix electrics and then they'll bring it back when they've built their own cabinets or something and then yeah we'll do the second fix and stuff like that but because i think the two critical bits which i mean my advice from a non-conversion but obviously i know what i'm doing yeah um is don't do the electrics yourself or at least very least get them checked and then gas because yeah. obviously those two if it was a house, you wouldn't be doing them yourself. No, exactly. You, nobody would really be doing the 240 volt electrics themselves or gas appliances themselves. Yeah. So why, just because you've actually got a van which you can fill with and there's no regulation around it, why, why all of a sudden are you all of a sudden competent to be able to do it yourself? Yeah. Well, you, you're probably not, um, and that's why you need to be obviously speaking to the professionals, isn't it? So even if people are, then they should be speaking to somebody and getting the gas safe. Um, I think it's wise sure. to get it done and, and at least checked and somebody just to have a good look over it who, as you said, is competent at doing it to be able to understand, is this right? Does it look correct? And, it, you know, it, a lot of the technology out there now for camper van uh, and motorhome and everything is so, um, so clever in how it works. Uh, we use a lot of Vitron equipment, which is, in my opinion, probably one of the best bits on the market. Got it myself. Yeah, really amazing bits of kit you know, will work with any different battery type, but you run the risk of if you set it up wrong when you initially install your battery in your electrical system, before you know it, you can you can yeah. ruin the system quite quickly. So, so simple things can actually lead to, to big problems. Yeah, then. yeah, and it, it can look right, but if it's, like we said, it's not set up properly or incorrect fuse ratings is a, yeah. is a big one that we see that it, you buy a kit from somewhere that looks like it's right, but actually the, you know, the kit that you fit in is all relevant to what you're running in the van, whereas yeah. it's very generic. It turns up in a box. You think, yeah, if we go, fit it. And then actually, before you know it, you know, it's not the correct fuse rating. The, the number of bits that we've replaced water pumps and lights for people and stuff like that, where it's been overfused yeah. and then it's burnt it's out burnt something out, yeah. accidentally, not through anybody using it incorrectly. You know, they haven't been running their tap like any, any different to anybody else has with a camper van, but because it's not correctly fused and the ratings aren't checked and there's those little bits that over the life ownership of a van can really top up in terms of the cost of having various bits and pieces replaced because yeah. the more fiddly it is the more hours it takes to do and as much as it is we we want to keep the cost down for the customer yeah. as much as possible so that actually they can do the additions that they want to do that they need like the solar panels and the rollout yeah. awnings as we're sat under here today so yeah there's there's tons of different bits that you can go yeah. wrong with at the beginning that can cause you problems later down the line. So if if somebody is starting out on the self build, you mentioned the stages. Talk me through that. So the first part, if somebody gets a brand new van, not a brand new van, brand new to them, to them they yeah. get their van. Uh, and I've seen one in the way here too. I do I do like that colour blue. Um, but what what is that first thing which they need to be doing to get going? They might not have the however much money you're going to need to do the van. Where do they start? What what's each stage? Just very briefly, yeah. where did they start? I think in an ideal world, we'd normally tend to do like the dirty work first, if that makes sense. So, uh, you know, fitting the windows, fitting the pop top, which chances are you're probably not going to be that confident cutting a nice no. hole in your new to you van. So you might well get somebody else to do that. But at that point, um, you'd start by carpet lining the interior and then doing your soundproofing levels that you want to put in there yourself. Um, and then your floor goes in. And at that point, when you're um, when you carpet line it, that would be the point to almost run like the first stage of electrical kit in there. Um, and then when it starts to come together after that, 
you'll have mapped out roughly where you can have your electrical points in your USBs for charging the kids' iPads when they're driving so that they're not arguing in yeah. the back and all of that sort of stuff as well. So I think if you map that out in advance and know what you're going to want and where you're going to want it in the van, then whether you're doing it yourself for somebody else to check or getting somebody else to do it for you, if you've got an idea of where it's going to go, then that that is a good starting point. And you know, there's plenty of meets with various owners clubs everywhere. Yeah. It's good to go and talk to everybody else to see, you know, where have you put your lights or... And yeah. people will be really honest with you because everybody's made a mistake as to where they put certain things. And actually, we're... You know, we're the same that we yeah. we put stuff in places in vans that we know works, but that might not fit what the lifestyle of that no. particular customer needs. So, yeah, I think if you map out your build first, work out where all your electric is going to go, try and get as much of that hidden away as possible because you don't want to see tons of cables on display yeah. and everything else. Um, and then it really is a case of of getting yourself to the point where the shell's almost done and nicely lined, or you know, boarded out, or whichever way you're going to do it and your floor's all in, and then you're ready to do the exciting bit of bringing it together as something that is going to look finished eventually. Whether that takes you two weeks or two years, it will eventually come together. Um, and then you get to that point where, yeah, like you said, you, you're probably going to want the electrics connecting, uh, some gas doing, and at that stage, you probably want to be speaking to somebody who's competent at doing the install yeah. for you um, and talking to them in advance as well because a lot of people don't realise, but converters... Uh, we are they are quite busy yeah. yeah sometimes you know sometimes you know you can see coming up on these forums that i'm going out next week i need my van for this weekend you know can somebody do it and it is difficult isn't it because yeah, yeah. you know reputable converters they are booked way way in advance yeah you, um yeah a lot of a lot of them are but there are there's a lot of conversion companies around the uk and some of them are really huge big companies yeah. with massive workshops and big workforces um which they potentially can fit stuff in short yeah. notice. But if you're almost planning ahead, then you can get in touch with whoever's local to you to save you driving two or three yeah. hours to get it done and actually book it in in advance. And, um, but yeah, I think, uh, I think I always say to people, whatever you're looking to get booked in, book it now for whenever you need it in the future. And then you're not going to be yeah. disappointed when that time comes. The famous one is like heaters. Uh, it comes to the winter and everybody goes, yeah. oh, my word, it's turned a bit cold. Yeah. I need a heater. And then everybody wants a heater fitted next week or the week after. And not everybody can accommodate that all the time. So it's almost better. Sometimes you want to do it slightly backwards. Get your heater fitted in the summer yeah. and then you're ready for the winter. Well, funny enough, I have been seeing on uh, some of the groups, you know, even June, July, um, even though the weather's pretty pants, people are actually now thinking, well, the one or two yeah. are thinking about actually getting it done. But you'll start to see, obviously, in a few months' time, yeah, yeah. that there'll be adverts out there. We can fit your, your whatever kind of diesel eater it is, and yeah. then there'll be all the arguments. You don't want to buy the Chinese. You don't want to be buying the Chinese. You want to be buying the reputables. Then you'd be no, no. The Chinese are great. I've got one. I've had one in there, and it's yeah, yeah. All that's going to start soon, isn't it? Yeah, it won't be long. Yeah, yeah. They're always out there hanging around. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, as far as that's concerned, that is brilliant, and I think there's a few more things there which I want to touch on actually in the future. But it's that time of the week, product of the week. And I know that everybody's been able to see that one there right behind me. So tell me about the Alpicool. Yeah, so um, this is the uh, Alpicool compressor-driven cool box. Compressor, um, so it's yeah. a good one then. Yeah, as brilliant as um, having your camper van is, the fridge is great for a few nights or if you don't mind restocking it, but... If you're away for, let's say, a slightly longer period of time and you need something to keep your food in or keep your drinks in and you've got the awning outside or you've got electric hookup or alternatively, you've just got your standard leisure battery set up with a 12-volt socket somewhere, that Alpacool would probably be my little winner of a product, to be honest. We've used it quite a lot. We tend to sort of chuck it out in the awning if we're away for a few days. Um, it's an amazing bit of kit. It goes down to, I think, minus 22 degrees. Um, so it can be used as a freezer as well. Comes in a massive variety of sizes. They do a lot smaller one than that. What size is that one? I think that's a 20 litre off the top of my head. Um, but they, they go right up to, I think it's a 50 is the biggest one. Um, but it's very much like your compressor driven fridge that's in your camper van that yeah. it's really low power draw. It'll run off solar for, well, as long as the weather's not like it is today for quite a few days. Um, and 
as long as you don't keep opening and shutting it, it will yeah. stay cold for ages. I mean, we did a week in Cornwall with it during heat wave and it barely moved off being one or two degrees. And the beauty of it, it cools really quickly as well, about 20 minutes and it can be down to about one or two degrees. So yeah, you can keep it cool when you're driving to wherever you're going. But I think that would probably be my little, um, little gem. And because it comes with household adapter as well, if you're having your barbecue, you can use it at home as well. Perfect. Mul multitude of, uh, uh, of wins there with it, really. Because I have not specific any specific brand. Um, oh, I think I actually might have mentioned Alpicu in the past when I've actually been talking about conversions and not specific conversions themselves, but more around the lines of people need to think about what kind of bed do you want. Do you want a rock and roll bed? Do you want a rib bed? Actually, do you need a fridge? Yeah. Or could you do with you know a cool box such as that? So I have actually kind of touched on those in the past. Um, because... I, I see the benefit in those that if you go into the beach and you are in the middle of a heat wave, you can actually just take it down take to the beach with, yeah. and then you've got those cold drinks there. Yeah, you? yeah, it's a, so it's, it's yeah, it's a real, real versatile awesome. product. And obviously, you know, I know your conversions have obviously got the 50, is it 50? Yeah, fridge? Dometic CRX 50, um, yeah. So, but you don't have to have one of them. You could actually no. have a space where you could put one of those and then Slot, you can take sort of it a cool out. box into it. So, yeah, there's plenty of options there for it. consultation, and, I guess. Yeah, it is, yeah. Keep it nice and versatile. You can always leave a space in there somewhere or other. There's always space for a few drinks in there. Absolutely. Speaking of drinks, uh, do you fancy the Rattler? Oh, <laughs> we've got to leave it. It's got to keep going through the video, isn't it? I'm going to drink that. I'm going to, I'm going to, it's going to be me. When I'm not driving, when I'm, I'm pitched up at a campsite, I'm going to be on those. That's what it'll be. Nobody's like taking it yet. Not today. Some of us have got to drive home still. <laughs> anyway, thanks very much for your time. I genuinely Pleasure. do really appreciate that. It's been good to, come, good to come and see you. We'll come and see you again. Got a few more topics, like I said. Uh, so thanks again, everybody. Hope you've enjoyed that today. If you haven't seen the first one I did, which was with Dean from Titan Transporters, you can have a look at that one here. Um, or if you want to see some more information about some of the dodgy campervan conversions, which I've touched on in the past, you can have a look at that video here. For now, take care, and I hope to see you soon.